Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm OP and in today's episode we'll be going over some of the best highlights from all of the LPL spring matchups of the day. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Keeping my eyes on the... Oh? Oh, Trey, the Meteor is already... What? What? Psychopath pathing is that from Meteor? He wants to make this play on the bottom side. Zora forced to flash with a handshake. Gets it after the prediction. First blood for Meteor. Who needs camps when you can farm champions? Hold on. I was... Okay. I'm really in. They do find them... Oh, they do all find themselves in Skirmish bot lane, but top. I think Birdall just runs out of this one, right? He is Udyr. Has flash available, not the ghost. Ooh. But doesn't even have to use it. Keeps himself safe up top. Yeah, and there was about to be a scary oh, stun bottle as well. Oh, there is. The hook is buffered on the handshake. Jin Zhao goes down. Zora is low, though, and Meteor wants a bit of this action. Not level six on the graves. So no ultimate to come to the table. All three go over. Wants to get a little schnacky schnack for his jungle pet. We'll be able to get that bonus XP. As uh, Xiao Xu taking some heavy trades to the top side. But realistically, this is Udyr versus Cassante. We ain't seeing any solo kills. Oh no! Oh. He walks out. There's a gap between the minions for some reason. That's going to be cleansed oh. from Xiaoya, unfortunate. And uh, I take it back on the top lane violence because Meteor's hanging around. This easily could be a dive angle. Birdall can tank. Meteor's moved over. And Hai Chao's even going to use the wall to be a part of it. Does get himself that assist, and Birdall grabs the kill. Just about. Now he's going to reply right here. Oh, he's building towards that Kraken Slayer. Uh, you see that. The Udyr is not necessarily going to be too tanky uh, on the first item. It's most likely going to be a gauntlet, uh, taking it by the sheen that we see in the inventory. And right here, RA are going to choose again to trade. Oh, oh no. Zora goes wide on the hook. This is an angle for the Draven. Cash in here. Zora goes down. 700 bonus gold for Xiaoya. Viklo in a 1v1 with Xiaoya. He's got no mana, but he's got axes. And Assume could be in trouble. Flash available, Ooh. but not going to be used as Assume finishes that kill off. Vikla under the tower. One Spirit Rush remaining to potentially get out of dodge. Or just use it to get back under the tower again. When it comes to somebody face shaking a team fight, being at the front of the team fight, you see him right now in the top lane taking the full tower. Uh, 14 minutes in. He's going to be the order. So as long as Birdle is not there, RA feels. <laughs> Pretty safe but, walking into these fights, but now that Birdle is there. Birdle's literally just walked into Herald, essentially 1v4, and it's just like, what are you gonna do about it? Xiaoya gets another cash in as Vikla has to just dash away to safety. Birdle's 2v1ing the enemy top jungle and keeping them away. This is a huge fight. Charm lands from Vikla, but it doesn't really achieve anything. And LGD cleanly walk into the Herald pit after taking Drake as well. Draven and then Xiaoya gets to walk up for free right here. RA caught sleeping. No one on the mid lane rotation. Asum, of course, cannot walk up on the Jinx. They're going to lose one tower. LGD are going to choose to take another headbutt onto another tower. Birdle, of course, doesn't care uh, if he gets caught midway. Vikla is in the flank from the right. Zora flashes to get that knock up. Here's a charm from Vikla as well. Gets a bit of damage down, but... Jin Zhao survives, and now Vikla could be the one in trouble. Uh -oh. Instead, Meteor's trying to chase it. This may be an overchase from LGD, but no. Turns out Birdle can literally just walk at them, and it's going to work out. LGD, they take one for free. I think there's much of a way for RA to fight for this. I'm surprised that they're fostering like they want to. I feel like this is a take the tier one top angle as opposed to fight for Drake. Hmm. This is becoming a little bit difficult now because you've got a mega tank in the likes of Udyr and you only have an AD carry with consistent damage. Vikla! Jin Chao's found here. Bailout available for him, but he walks away without needing it. Xiaoya uses that ultimate just to try and deter the fight. All right, doing a good job actually in this scrap and a hook onto Meteor as well, but the damage is plenty. Hai Chao with the first one as Xiaoya charges forward on his own. Maybe went a little too far forward there. Just takes a chunk. Vikla gets a charm in the mid lane, but the. This barrier, or the, I can't remember what it's called, Archangels <laughs> onto Hijau, the Seraphs of Praise, that's the name. Just start the Baron, of course, right now, but Zinzo hasn't necessarily had too much impact in the early game to make up for the level disparity right here. And honestly, RA caught asleep yet again. They are the neutral objectives team, and they've lost yeah. pretty much every single one of them but two. I feel like partly it's RA just conceding anymore. Xiaoshu can try and be tanky, but... 
Tier 2 gone in the mid lane as LGD try and force something. It's another good charm from Vinkler here. Meteor force away, but the Whirling Death does so much. Zora flashes, but he's stunned up. He's CC'd up, and Xiaoya is cleaning up. Double kill on the Draven, and LGD will break the base. Well, we're talking about only the Tier 2s going down with LGD having the Baron, but this is going to be a fight that RA tried to take, and unfortunately, their timers in terms of taking these fights, try to make picks, have not been it. They did end up losing another tower, and this time it's going to be a tier. Like, RA have lost their timer right here. The second yeah. you see Udyr on a side lane, just walk up, try to get a pick. Uh-oh, now Bertle is looking for a pick. That's Crescent Guard used very early once again, not even in a fight. That all will be fine. He'll walk He's away from tickled. this one. And again, we're going to see the exact same situation that we saw last time down with the bottom in here. This time a Baron, where Nio has to use the Crescent Guard so early, he cannot be a frontline. Zora is going to go down as well. Bird all happy to tank. Xiaoxu moves forward, but what can Xiaoxu do on his own here? He can get a Q3 back. Jin Zhao will be picked oh. up. That's what Xiaoxu can do. Bird all next chopping block, but no. Assume goes down. It's a disaster. It looked so good, but they're so far behind. It's just not enough. We were winning until we ended our game. They look pretty clean. From shielding the Draven early on to cashing out the stacks to using that Udyr, this monster later on in these fights, LGD are going to be closing out this game pretty cleanly. Potentially looking towards five wins if they can repeat this performance. LGD, great little showing here against oh RA in game number one to show you. It's just styling at this point. A double kill to finish things out. 14 to 4 and 9 kills for Xiaoya on his from the set of LGD, all the protection with the Cassante and the Alistair. You've got so much space in again with the Varus and the Graves plus Karma to play those team fights. However, on the set of RA, this time around, you've got a way for Graves is going to be decent out a lot of AD burst damage. So I don't mind the only hit Varus right here, especially since Zinza is going to get tanky. The Aether is going to get tanky with a lot of healing as well. Now you are sneak himself up towards the bot side. Oh, LGD are pushing forward. <laughs> Zora punted into the enemy lineup. And it's Hold a up. great start from LGD. They've answered beautifully. Assume getting chunked out as well as Meteor jumping forwards for the double kill. And Nayu sent packing underneath his tower. LGD once again answer RA's early game. Nayu did manage to get one, so he will at least get an XP. Uh, Xiaoya is real lonely underneath this tower. Heal available, but no flash here. Zora going to be tanking as soon gets underneath the tower, but the TP is enough to dissuade this one. And the WQ does massive damage. Hai Chao in to finish the job, and Xiaoya once again protected. This is a tailored strategy for what RA are bringing in the early game. Meteor just dives into the back of the pit. He's like, oh, you guys want to do Drake? That's cute. I'm Graves and I've got a serrated Dirk. Zora pinned oh, against Zora. the wall. No summoners. He's down. And honestly, this was a little overzealous to try and go for Drake for RA. Okay, let's play a game. What are we Zora playing? Zora had seven deaths by the end of last game. Do you go... Over hmm, under? I think he's going to get more over or under, yeah. Uh, pretty much the only significant engage on this team. He's gonna have to go in, and RA don't exactly have a scaling composition. And I don't think these engages are gonna go too well. Here we go, Fate's Call. Nice step forwards there from Chin Chao to block it. And Zora steps on forwards. Headbutt comes through onto Assume, but he's just stacking up. Jin Chao's gonna die here, but Zora's down. That's number four. Xiaoya getting the Ren stacks. Can he finish him? Yes, just! Assume gets the double before going down. Asum got so angry there. He's like, freaking, I'll do it myself. Going for an invade here onto the Gromp. Meteor has that smite available and will be able to find it. Nice little shot there from Meteor. He's 4 0 oh, 1. He's already got his Coast Blade. And now we're going to dive in the bottom side onto Asum. WQ just does so much damage. And uh, Jin Chao tank it as well. He's going to be fine. Fantastic bot lane here from LGD. Graves around, so you definitely don't want to be taking these fights. The TP has to come in from Vikla yeah. all the way from Botland after he pressures out 
that wave and right here LTD are playing in their face. Nah, he just lost half his HP trying to get honey fruit. Kind of ironic, honestly. As Jin Zhao flashes for a double pull as well. Spiraling despair to try and zone away, but the arrow is true from Xiaoya. William Tell knocking apples off of heads right here. That's gonna be a triple kill come through. No, Meteor steals it away with his own shotgun, but Herald claimed now by LGD. Yeah, LGD clinic right here. Vikla is looking, but he doesn't quite have the damage. The ultimate was also used in the previous skirmish. Probably as Chain of Corruption misses right here. Probably your only saving grace is Vikla onto this way. Sort of scaling into that lake. And there is a flank right here from Zaju. Maybe he finds the angle. Gonna try for something. Xiao Yu oh. sidesteps Jin Chao double pulverizer. It is so hard to kill a bird. Also now behind enemy lines as well. Assume dives forward to try and finish off this Alistair, but he's still going. And there's an all out bringing Nayo over on a silver platter. Now that is room service. And the RA thought they had the right to pull a fight right there. Pick that doesn't do well later on into the game. It's not a good sign. LGD. Need to be cautious. High Chow could be caught here. Vickler and Dio committing so hard for this play, but Zora's moving in as well. Depth charge should be able to land. Doesn't even need it, in fact. Just the root will do. There we go. A pick coming through for RA. A little bit of damage comes down. Crescent Guard used by Nayo just to deny the damage out from Xiaoya. At Bali, you can get into this way. Inventory is going to be hugely oh. impactful for next fight. Uh-oh. Bertles chasing Xiaoshu here, looking for an all-out angle. Q3 available to him, and that will pull him back underneath the tower. Xiaoshu doesn't actually tank any tower shots, but I don't think it matters. Sante. Bertol just solo kills Xiaoshu. We saw early games, we saw fights from them that looked convincing, like high Chow. So many games would find an advantage and then sometimes throw it away uh -oh. a little bit as uh, Xiaoshu is just gonna be one shot unfortunate um but yeah they had these like early games that high chow would maybe go then you take the neutral objective they yeah. have used every single opportunity on the map to take something for themselves that's meaningful on the rift whether it's a tower or whether it's an objective but all just face checks into four and he is not afraid to do so nio forced to flash that's crescent guard as well as jin Zhao gets a bit of a cc chain nio walks away with his life no he doesn't arrow in from Xiaoya. jin Zhao flashes back into the play for more lgd doing everything all right desperately trying to fight for control but it's just not happening yeah and this is going to be so for the side of LGD, we said you're playing on a timer. If you're RA, you're behind in gold. Unfortunately, Yohe is not going to have death cap for this particular team fight because you did not contest. This, uh, them having this lead with the scaling version of Paris. This isn't even lead Valley. It's not even like the one that's meant to be super good early. Aaron taken for free as Bird uh, literally Birdle? 1v3 zones everybody. Then goes for an all out to assume and High Chow flashes to finish the job. LGD are straight up styling on RA at this point. Q3 doesn't quite land onto Nayo, but Bird doesn't care. He's just going to walk underneath the tower. Nayo on about 1 HP. Luckily for him, Graves can't shoot past towers. Because Zazu is sort of balancing between having to potentially defend his top side of the map if they get dived into a hey do i want to engage into a fight with this okay. Sandra, you probably don't <laughs> they made a 2v1 awesome. play there onto a birdle a birdle's like i like those odds take some down with ease another all out over the wall and another kill take 17 to 4 as lgd just laying down the law today over RA. Game one was a bit oh, closer. God. Game number two has been an absolute schlacking. That'll be two in hips now. I think LGD can just end the game. Absolutely, you have two huge waves coming in, both barrened up, only three members of RA to defend. They're gonna try and get on Shao Shu Zora, tries to protect his top laner. No can do, I'm afraid G flashes onto the fountain as Vickler flashes forward, gets a bit of a combo. It doesn't really do anything, but hey, the, the combo looks cool. Xiao Xu goes in and gets shut down by the shotgun. Xiao Yu diving the fan at this point. As assumed, desperately tries for anything. Meteor flashing in for a bonus. And unfortunately, I was wrong. Zora, only six deaths. So <laughs> under the eight. With the likes of Graves to actually farm through your jungle and try to get the advantages through that. However, Again, the top side of the map for the side of RA 
is very strong, and I will be keeping my eyes on that. Oh, for a trade, the meteor is already what? What psychopath pathing is that from Meteor? He wants to make this play on the bottom side. Zora forced to flash, but the handshake gets it after the prediction. First blood for Meteor. Who needs camps when you can farm champions? Hold on, I was okay. I'm really in. They do find them. Oh, they do all find themselves in skirmish bot lane, but top. I think Birdall just runs out of this one, right? He is Udyr. Has flash available, not the ghost. Ooh. But doesn't even have to use it. Keeps himself safe up top. Yeah, and there was about to be a scary oh. start bottom as well. Oh, there is. The hook is buffered on the handshake. Jin Zhao goes down. Zora is low, though. And Meteor wants a bit of this action. Not level six on the graves. So no ultimate to come to the table. All three go over. Wants to get a little schnacky schnack for his jungle pet. We'll be able to get that bonus XP. As uh, Xiao Xu taking some heavy trades to the top side. But realistically, this is Udyr versus Cassante. We ain't seeing any solo kills. Oh, no! Oh. He walks out. There's a gap between the minions for some reason. That's going to be cleansed oh. from Xiao Ya, unfortunate. And uh, I take it back on the top lane violence because Meteor's hanging around. This easily could be a dive angle. Birdall can tank. Meteor's moved over. And Hai Chao's even going to use the wall to be a part of it. Does get himself that assist, and Birdall grabs the kill. Just about. Now he's going to reply right here. Oh, he's building towards that Kraken Slayer. Uh, you see that the Udyr is not necessarily going to be too tanky uh, on the first item. It's most likely going to be a Gauntlet, uh, taking it by the Sheen that we see in the inventory. And right here, RA are going to choose again to trade. Oh, oh no. Zora goes wide on the hook. This is an angle for the Draven. Cash in here. Zora goes down. 700 bonus gold for Xiaoya. Viklo in a 1v1 with Xiaoya. He's got no mana, but he's got axes. And Assume could be in trouble. Flash available, Ooh. but not going to be used as Assume finishes that kill off. Vikla under the tower. One Spirit Rush remaining to potentially get out of dodge. Or just use it to get back under the tower again. When it comes to somebody face shaking a team fight, being at the front of the team fight, you see him right now in the top lane taking the full tower. Uh, 14 minutes in. He's going to be the order. So as long as Birdle is not there, RA feels. <laughs> Pretty safe but, walking into these fights, but now that Birdle is there. Birdle's literally just walked into Herald, essentially 1v4, and it's just like, what are you gonna do about it? Xiaoya gets another cash in as Vikla has to just dash away to safety. Birdle's 2v1ing the enemy top jungle and keeping them away. This is a huge fight. Charm lands from Vikla, but it doesn't really achieve anything. And LGD cleanly walk into the Herald pit after taking Drake as well. Draven and then Xiaoya gets to walk up for free right here. RA caught sleeping. No one on the mid lane rotation. Asum, of course, cannot walk up on the Jinx. They're going to lose one tower. LGD are going to choose to take another headbutt onto another tower. Birdle, of course, doesn't care uh, if he gets caught midway. Vikla is in the flank from the right. Zora flashes to get that knock up. Here's a charm from Vikla as well. Gets a bit of damage down, but... Jin Zhao survives, and now Vikla could be the one in trouble. Uh -oh. Instead, Meteor's trying to chase it. This may be an overchase from LGD, but no. Turns out Birdle can literally just walk at them, and it's going to work out. LGD, they take one for free. I think there's much of a way for RA to fight for this. I'm surprised that they're fostering like they want to. I feel like this is a take the tier one top angle as opposed to fight for Drake. Hmm. This is becoming a little bit difficult now because you've got a mega tank in the likes of Udyr and you only have an AD carry with consistent damage. Vikla! Jin Chao's found here. Bailout available for him, but he walks away without needing it. Xiaoya uses that ultimate just to try and deter the fight. RA doing a good job actually in this scrap and a hook onto Meteor as well, but the damage is plenty. Hai Chao with the first one as Xiaoya charges forward on his own. Maybe went a little too far forward there. Just takes a chunk. Vikla gets a charm in the mid lane, but the. This barrier, or the, I can't remember what it's called, Archangels <laughs> onto Hijau, the Seraphs of Praise, that's the name. Just start the Baron, of course, right now, but Zinzo hasn't necessarily had too much impact in the early game to make up for the level disparity right here. And honestly, RA caught asleep yet again. They are the neutral objectives team, and they've lost yeah. pretty much every single one of them but two. I feel like partly it's RA just conceding anymore. Xiaoshu can try and be tanky, but... 
Tier 2 gone in the mid lane as LGD try and force something. It's another good charm from Vinkler here. Meteor force away, but the Whirling Death does so much. Zora flashes, but he's stunned up. He's CC'd up, and Xiaoya is cleaning up. Double kill on the Draven, and LGD will break the base. Well, we're talking about only the Tier 2s going down with LGD having the Baron, but this is going to be a fight that RA tried to take, and unfortunately, their timers in terms of taking these fights, try to make picks, have not been it. They did end up losing another tower, and this time it's going to be a tier. Like, RA have lost their timer right here. The second yeah. you see Udyr on a side lane, just walk up, try to get a pick. Uh-oh, now Bertle is looking for a pick. That's Crescent Guard used very early once again, not even in a fight. That all will be fine. He'll walk He's away from tickled. this one. And again, we're going to see the exact same situation that we saw last time down with the bottom in here. This time a Baron, where Nio has to use the Crescent Guard so early, he cannot be a frontline. Zora is going to go down as well. Bird all happy to tank. Xiaoxu moves forward, but what can Xiaoxu do on his own here? He can get a Q3 back. Jin Zhao will be picked oh. up. That's what Xiaoxu can do. Bird all next chopping block, but no. Assume goes down. It's a disaster. It looked so good, but they're so far behind. It's just not enough. We were winning until we ended our game. They looked pretty clean. From shielding the Draven early on to cashing out the stacks to using that Udyr, this monster later on in these fights, LGD are going to be closing out this game pretty cleanly. Potentially looking towards five wins if they can repeat this performance. LGD, great little showing here against oh RA in game number one to show you. It's just styling at this point. A double kill to finish things out. 14 to 4 and 9 kills for Xiaoya on his from the set of LGD, all the protection with the Cassante and the Alistar. You've got so much space in again with the Varus and the Graves plus Karma to play those teamfights. However, on the set of RA, this time around, you've got a way. You've got Graves, who's going to be dissing out a lot of AD burst damage. So I don't mind the only hit Varus right here, especially since Zinza is going to get tanky. The Aedra is going to get tanky with a lot of healing as well. Now you are sneak himself up towards that bot side. Oh, LGD, I push it forward. <laughs> Zora punted into the enemy lineup. And it's Hold a up. great start from LGD. They've answered beautifully. Assume getting chunked out as well as Meteor jumping forwards for the double kill. And Nayu sent packing underneath his tower. LGD once again answer RA's early game. Nayu did manage to get one, so he will at least get an XP. Uh, Xiaoya is real lonely underneath this tower. Heal available, but no flash here. Zora going to be tanking as soon gets underneath the tower, but the TP is enough to dissuade this one, and the WQ does massive damage. Hai Chao in to finish the job, and Xiaoya once again protected. This is a tailored strategy for what RA are bringing in the early game. Meteor just dives into the back of the pit. He's like, oh, you guys want to do Drake? That's cute. I'm Graves, and I've got a serrated Dirk. Zora pinned oh, against the wall on. no summoners he's down and honestly this was a little overzealous to try go for drake for already okay let's play a game what are we zora playing? had seven deaths by the end of last game do you go over hmm, under i think he's gonna get more over or under yeah uh pretty much the only significant engage on this team he's gonna have to go in and ra don't exactly have a scaling composition I don't think these engages are going to go too well. Here we go. Fate's call. Nice step forwards there from Jin Zhao to block it. And Zora steps on forwards. Headbutt comes through onto Assume, but he's just stacking up. Jin Zhao's going to die here, but Zora's down. That's number four. Xiaoya getting the Ren stacks. Can he finish him? Yes, just. Assume gets the double before going down. Asum got so angry there. He's like, freaking, I'll do it myself. Going for an invade here. Onto the Gromp. Meteor has that smite available and will be able to find it. Nice little shot there from Meteor. He's 4 0 oh, 1. He's already got his Coast Blade. And now we're going to dive in the bottom side onto Assume. WQ just does so much damage. And uh, Jin Chao tank it as well. He's going to be fine. Fantastic bot lane here from LGD. Graves around, so you definitely don't want to be taking these fights. The TP has to come in from Vikla yeah. all the way from Botland after he pressures out. 
that wave and right here LTD are playing in their face. Nah, he just lost half his HP trying to get honey fruit. Kind of ironic, honestly. As Jin Zhao flashes for a double pull as well. Spiraling despair to try and zone away, but the arrow is true from Xiaoya. William Tell knocking apples off of heads right here. That's gonna be a triple kill come through. No, Meteor steals it away with his own shotgun, but Herald claimed now by LGD. Yeah, LGD clinic right here. Vikla is looking, but he doesn't quite have the damage. The ultimate was also used in the previous skirmish. Probably as Chain of Corruption misses right here. Probably your only saving grace is Vikla onto this way. Sort of scaling into that lake. And there is a flank right here from Saju. Maybe he finds the angle. Gonna try for something. Shall you oh. sidesteps Jin Chow double pulverize it is so the hard TV. to kill a bird also now behind enemy lines as well. Assume dives forward to try and finish off this Alistair, but he's still going. And there's an all-out bringing Nayo over on a silver platter. Now that is room service. And the RA thought they had the right to pull a fight right there. Pick that doesn't do well later on into the game. It's not a good sign. LGD. Need to be cautious. High Chow could be caught here. Vickler and Dio committing so hard for this play, but Zora's moving in as well. Depth charge should be able to land. Doesn't even need it, in fact. Just the root will do. There we go. A pick coming through for RA. A little bit of damage comes down. Crescent Guard used by Nayo just to deny the damage out from Xiaoya. At Bali, you can get into this way. Inventory is going to be hugely oh. impactful for next fight. Uh-oh. Bertles chasing Xiao Xu here, looking for an all-out angle. Q3 available to him, and that'll pull him back underneath the tower. Xiao Xu doesn't actually tank any tower shots, but I don't think it matters. Asante. Bertles just solo kills Xiao Xu. We saw early games, we saw fights from them that looked convincing, like high Chow. So many games would find an advantage and then sometimes throw it away uh -oh. a little bit as uh, Xiao Xu is just gonna be one shot unfortunate um but yeah they had these like early games that high chow would maybe go then you take the neutral objective they yeah. have used every single opportunity on the map to take something for themselves that's meaningful on the rift whether it's a tower or whether it's an objective Bertol just face checks into four and he is not afraid to do so. Nayo forced to flash that's Crescent Guard as well as Jin Zhao gets a bit of a CC chain. Nayo walks away with his life. No, he doesn't. Arrow in from Xiaoya. Jin Zhao flashes back into the play for more. LGD doing everything. RA desperately trying to fight for control, but it's just not happening. Yeah, and this is going to be soul for the side of lgd we said you're playing on a timer if you're ra you're behind in gold unfortunately your is not going to have death gap for this particular team fight because you did not contest this, uh them having this lead with the scaling version of paris this isn't even lethality it's not even like the one that's meant to be super good early Aaron taken for free as Birdo uh, literally 1v3 zones everybody. Then goes for an all out to assume and High Chow flashes to finish the job. LGD are straight up styling on RA at this point. Q3 doesn't quite land onto Nayo, but Birdo doesn't care. He's just going to walk underneath the tower. Nayo on about 1 HP. Luckily for him, Graves can't shoot past towers. Because Sajou is sort of balancing between having to potentially defend his top side of the map if they get dived into a hey do i want to engage into a fight with this okay. Sandra, you probably don't <laughs> they made a 2v1 awesome. play there onto a birdle and birdle's like i like those odds take some down with ease another all out over the wall and another kill take 17 to 4 as lgd just laying down the law today over RA. Game one was a bit oh, closer. God. Game number two has been an absolute schlacking. That'll be two in hips now. I think LGD can just end the game. Absolutely, you have two huge waves coming in, both barrened up, only three members of RA to defend. They're gonna try and get on Shao Shu Zora, tries to protect his top laner. No can do, I'm afraid G flashes onto the fountain as Vickler flashes forward, gets a bit of a combo. It doesn't really do anything, but hey, the, the combo looks cool. Xiao Xu goes in and gets shut down by the shotgun. Xiao Yu diving the fan at this point. As Assume desperately tries for anything. Meteor flashing in for a bonus. And unfortunately, I was wrong. Zora, only six deaths. So <laughs> under the eight. So JDG, a lot of uh, like 
wombo combo power with the rel and the annie coming on through and ruler on the virus as the hard carry but edg fast aggressive fights here with the ari viego renekton bots on the map i saw is the entirety of jdg kanavi's moving missing is moving yagao was moving for a second as well yeah. They might be diving these zigs. There is flash, but there's no TP. All he available. Of XP if you die. All available for Ruler here. Wave not cleared just yet. As uh, in the meantime, Vampire's um, just going to go down. That's first blood. And there we go. Oh, lands, and it's a solo kill for Ruler. Missing and Kanavi arrive, but Ruler's not having any of it. That's his goal. Well, that's his goal. However, they killed Alistar, and he didn't Pull get out. And they thought maybe there was some sort of re engage coming out out of somewhere i can all find a different explanation right there edg might take all five members and goto was the top side of the map okay. she is taking the 369 treatment yeah he's cleared the wave i don't think he survives this one though luckily vampire is very tanky so able to make that one happen monkey might just have to ult out of this one CC chain doesn't work because he was pretending to be Viego. Ala the target now flashes out to safety. A TP coming on through. The snake already in the top lane. Uh -oh. Five man play underneath the top lane. Yagao flashes to safety. Has his stun available if he can find a target. Vampire will be that target. And there's a kill as Ruler has TP'd in and looking for a little bit more. Wait for the Q and a double kill for Ruler. He's monster. And that'll be two drakes as well for JDG. Everything looking hunky dory. And I've got to be honest, we're talking about this top esports versus JDG race to this second. This game and what top esports showed us earlier on today. Monkey going for an invade on the blue buff now is missing the target. Ooh, does get denied his crash down. I don't think it'll lead to too much more though because Kanavi is diving in. Crest Cheer. guard available. 0909 might just die. W almost available and he hits it. 0909 down. Needs to be calling 999 at this point. He needs an ambulance. Sheer pulls him over the wall for a bonus. And in the meantime, Yagao's died. Oh, God. Don't worry about 999. He was playing in the previous series, guys. He doesn't know what he's talking about. No, nah, minutes. <laughs> he's almost at two items, like you say. That'll be Herald taken. He can move back to the mid lane. Pretty That's insane like... follow up to pick up the soul and try to go on for more in this particular team fight. So. There are some cases I where you can miss the TP as well to try what? and set the play up. Kanavi just dives straight onto this. Ari, you can't find the play if you're the one being played onto. 0909 kites away though. Kanavi goes down. Reset, Reset for Monkey and maybe a chance. 0909 barely survives the play. Is missing trying to kite away once again. Ruler still strong, but he's basically 3v5 at this point make it even less than that monkey goes down though and ala trying to escape auto down by ruler the q max range Ooh. and it's not quite enough but the q3 from sheer is plenty the snake dies to the red buff in the chicken camp and somehow uh, it was so good for so long in that fight and then edg just overstepped diving the tower and uh -oh. ruler still survived the entire time he's the new jungler now yeah, he's ganking his own lane at this point. Returns to the bottom lane after years of being roaming around the map. Out of the target, there's just nothing he can do to survive. I love this. I love the this great rule. top lane is in LPL right now. I feel like he's performing so consistently well. Now, granted, he's always on that Cassante, but... Here we go, Kanavi gets the blue buff, and then suddenly Tibbers is down. Ala down to half HP, trying to get onto Kanavi and force the fight, but the Crescent Guard is just too much. 0909 following up. Kanavi is still at half HP. They've used everything, everything EDG had, and it's just nowhere near enough. That's 4 for O. EDG getting obliterated by JDG. Another incredible fight coming out here from JDG. They're going to take the fourth dragon, which is going to mean soul for themselves. They're going to most likely sprint. Well, hits a key on both carries, chunking them for a third and a quarter of their health, respectively. And JDG can move into the mid lane in him as well. And you know, JDG, they beat Top Esports this split. That was the moment where they kind of put themselves on the map properly. And they lost to Weibo. I'll start to lose faith, but a really solid game number one here against EDG. You expect them to win this series. Oh, the flash not quite in range there from Ruler. As Monkey dives underneath his own towers, gets onto the fountain. JDG just keep the ball rolling, but I don't think they can quite end. And Ala pops the dog. <laughs> flashes in, looking for missing, but missing walks away. Ala can't make it happen, and the snake is punished as well. That 
will be game. Double Tibbers, double Rel combo on top, missing. Pays for his sins as he falls under the towers. But JDG, an absolute masterclass. 27 minute win here against EDG in game one. The two words that come in mind for this game was clean, played for picks later on at level six. Now, one thing that I do not like is laners that play more passively onto Vampire, but then Kanavi focused the Snake, who also had Flash, but no one else could reach the Snake. So that's a pretty big miss right there from Sensei. JDG, they're going again. We're just scrapping here. Missing is kind of low on HP, though, and it's a good start for EDG Monkey, the target. Oh, he oh. flops his Flash. Disaster from the jungler of EDG. Support for jungle, you'll take that trade. And now Kanavi wants to deny these recalls. Now has uh, Xin Zhao W to work with as Yagao pokes him up the top. W lands as well. Shield from Yagao, but they could just keep them here. There's no way to reset. Ruler is so slow at pushing this wave, but it's fast enough. The snake flashed on by Kanavi. He grabs himself a double kill, and you couldn't be happier than that. He's lurking around right here with Vampire, trying to steal the red buff away. He's going to get smited away by Kanavi. Not much found here. For EDG, yeah. I'll give props to them. They're looking. They need to make something happen towards the bot side of the map. They're pulling down 0909 as well. I don't know if this is a dive that can work with Kanavi in the wings, but let's find out. Ultimate comes out from Ruler, flashes back, but 0909 chases it. Missing next target, but Monkey's still under the tower. Flashes to safety. Yagao has to sweep this one up and sweep it up. He will kill onto Monkey. One for one here, but Ruler he wants to get all six if he can. That's fine for himself. EDG contesting on the final one. No smite available for Kanavi. Monkey has his, so this should be grub taken by EDG, at least denying six. Still five over to JDG. Not ideal for EDG. Hook comes on through. Great charm out from 0909, denying some of the follow-up, but Kanavi is all of the follow-up they need. There's one reset, and it's Rel as well. That's perfect. Monkey, the next target, who dives Ooh. further in. And we'll just be taken down. That's a second reset for Kanavi as yet. Vision toggle. I wasn't sure if they were camping in one of those brushes and the snake would be in trouble, but no. It's going to be onto Vampire here. Missing, starting the fight off. Depth charge onto two, pulling them back into the play. A monkey just can't escape. Jungle are down and maybe a little bit more under the tower as the snake forced away. Vampire trying to protect his AD carry here. Ghost available, but Flash isn't. The snake chased down. The stun hits, but. Missing goes wide on his hook, so Jinx underneath the tower, Vampire low and will be finished off. 0909 looking to answer though, Kanavi the target, but the Rel combo stuns him up. Kanavi keeps on forcing more, this Viego is monstrous. 5-0-3, and three. Kanavi is running so for JDG. But I mean, these fights are so one-sided at this point. Oh, oh no, Monkey's caught again, it's so sad to see. We were... Talking about Monkey coming into the series as well, I was excited to see what Monkey could bring to the table today, but Kanavi just reading him so down. Oh, <laughs> they're 3k up with the scaling comp. That's not how this is meant to go. Alan gonna oh. try and get onto Ruler here. Flashes, Cleanse comes out from Ruler, needs to dodge the charm, just gets under the minion wave. He survives, and now Kanavi can carry the fight. Oh, nine, oh, nine, the target, but Alan dives onto the smolder. Bit of revenge here. Can he get out with his life? Kanavi, this is the charm. Shouldn't matter too much, just dives into the action. Monkey dives in as well though. Missing here to protect his jungler. The resets will come on through once more. And that is all said and done. Kanavi once again sweeping up 7-0-4 on the Viego. Holy- Armor here, who the hell is gonna kill this one later on? Like, realistically, 0909 ain't exactly a tank shredder. Herald going to be used as a He's team to engage. engage onto Vampire. Double knock up though. Ala on the flank. This could be good for EDG. The Renekton behind enemy dead. lines. Kanavi somehow surviving for the time being. Doesn't have flash though. Shut down for Ala and Shit trying to kite away. Great charm comes out to missing. JDG way overstep. The snake is low. So is Monkey Ruler still here and has his ultimate available. The slow is there. Followed by his mummy. Ruler eats some of your screens. Look at Ari. Look at the little circle above her portrait. It's almost back up. It's almost back up. Vampire, what? Goes for a combo here. EDG wants themselves 4v4. Both TPs coming on through his sheer. Gets the knockup this time. 
and that'll be two kills already. Ala, no flank to work with, just gonna be in a front to back, gets away from the hook from missing. But ultimately, that's JDG starting strong here with Baron on the map. They can immediately turn their gaze. Absolutely, no jungler, no problem. 0909 is looking for potentially a pick onto Ruler. I think the best thing that EDG can actually do here is push that midland wave and just, just pray. Just go to the sides, pressure out these waves. You see the Renekton is already on his way down. 0909 all the way on his way up. Try to push out these waves, try to delay the inevitable. There is no jungler, so there's no sign of a steal right here. Maybe if there was super mega death row. I'll spring to the table. I'll yeah. show you actually get yeah. the kill. Here we go. All popped by sheer. Looking to finish things off. The snake knocked up. It's a mid lane tower as Ruler flashes to safety. And the execute start to come in. Smolder is online. The snake knocked up. The dragon roars in the sky. But Ruler, untouched in the fight so far. Flying forwards aggressively now. Feeling it in this game. As they take a mid in him. There's even a wave bot as well. So this will be a second in him as well. Who needs the Baron buff to take towers? Absolutely. Everything has been set up. You've got five void grabs as well. You get the extra buff when you hit the towers. You hurt them a little bit more. Ale on the flank, but there's not much to f instantly, so... Might as well not want to take your chances this time around. It is going to be the third dragon. So point for JDG and Vampire's just face checks. Has to try and find them. I think he was hoping to catch someone not resetting, but... Unfortunately, not going to happen. Ruler instant cleanse and Ala punished for the audacity to try and find a pick. JDG making it look easy here, as they should. As they should, because they're second place in the oh. LPL, and they're up against a team that's 3 and 12. They should make it look easy. I just wish Top Esports could have made it look easy earlier, too. Absolutely, 0909 is going to look for something, but not. He's going to use his last charge. Fall back onto that mid lane and try to clear out the way. A little bit of hope earlier on today against AL. They've got one last series against NIP who are on a bit of an upswing. Maybe it's possible for JDG. Hook comes in onto Monkey. Good little lawn combo to get their knockups going. Monkey just cannot escape. There's nothing he can do once he's in the fight. He's in. JDG happy to punish that. Yeah, very awkward fight right there. You had your two Paris split over the bot side of the screen. Then you had Vampire and Monkey on the other side of the screen. That's supposed to hundreds of stacks. We've seen his execute online for a long time at this stage. As 0909 looks for a charm oh. and only finds fire. Burnt to a crisp and JDG continue their siege. Hey, even if you hit the charm right there, your team is literally waiting at the Nexus Tower. It's a little bit uh, of miscommunication right there. But honestly, for EDG, this game has been over for so long that you're trying to make some desperate plays right there. Yagao even flashing onto Ale. Maybe a chance on the back the line. The solo is low, but the heal comes out from his ultimate and Vampire can't finish the kill. It looked okay for a second. <laughs> That's all we've got though, unfortunately for EDG. It's 2-0. One kill away from making it 24-7, just like the action in the LPL. But it's a 2-0 here for JDG over EDG. A confident win. These were some of the best highlights from all of the LPL spring matchups of the day. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.